Hey guys, in this tutorial, I show you some very simple keyframing methods. This video is going to be pretty simple. I'm making it mostly for people who are new to Anime Studio, or for people who are transferring from Flash to Anime Studio, because the way the layers and keyframes work are different in each. Now, it's important to point out that layers and keyframes are very important in each of these softwares. It's just that they work a little bit differently. So, for instance, in Flash, when I make my layers, I can see the timeline of each of those layers all at once on my timeline. With Anime Studio, you can only focus in on one timeline at a time for any given layer. You have to click on it to see it. So those are the main differences. So let's play around with this and animate these two objects I have on my screen. To start off, you can see that I have two layers, each holding a different object. Let's first click on the oval layer. Now, in order to animate this object, we need to be on frame one. Currently, we're on frame zero, and frame zero acts like the workspace for Anime Studio. We can move stuff around, but it doesn't affect the animation in any way. So let's just page over to frame one and let's select the translate points tool and click down once on your oval. When you do this, you'll notice now that we have two keyframes that appear. We have a point motion and we have a selected point motion, all from just clicking on the oval. Now, if we page over to, let's say about frame 36 with our arrow keys, and we just click and drag this oval, you'll notice now that two more points appear on the timeline. And if we page back through, we can see that those two points now have animation in between them. So putting down those keyframes is that simple. You simply move this object where you want it to go and Anime Studio does the rest of the work for you. So let's say now that you want to resize this object as it moves to the right. Well, let's go back here to frame 36, go to the scale tool, and just click and drag to enlarge it. Now we come back here, and again we can see that it gets bigger and smaller. So that is one thing we can do, and there's of course many different ways we can tween objects and we can animate them, but that's just one example. Now, let's say we want to animate the rectangle. Well, if we take the Select Layer tool, or the Translate Layer tool, and we try to click on it, we can't. We can only click on this oval. So we need to redirect our focus to the rectangle. So let's click on that in the Layers box. When we do this now, you'll notice that there are no keyframes on the timeline. That's because we are looking at the timeline of the rectangle. The oval timeline has no play in what we're looking at right now. I mean, when you page through, you'll still see it animate on its own timeline, so you can still preview it, but you just won't be able to manipulate it until you go back to the oval layer. So now, let's make sure that we are on frame one, and we can go up here to our tools and select the Translate Points tool again, and click on the rectangle. And then we'll just move our timeline to about frame 42, and then we can click and drag the rectangle to create that key point. So then if we come back here, we can see now that it animates. And now we can add a rotate to this as well. So we'll just click on the rotate points tool and rotate. So now we can see that we have a different effect come into play here. 
So that's how you can do some very simple animation with Anime Studio. And again, this is just barely, barely scratching the surface. So I believe this is a good stepping stone to show you guys first, especially if you're going from Flash to Anime Studio. It can be kind of confusing to wrap your head around the fact that you see the timelines differently depending on what layer you're clicked on. Anyway, I am planning to do more Anime Studio tutorials, so I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.